Hello everyone, hope your spooky seasons are going good. Pouring some of my ears, as always. Um, oh, and as always, before we start, obligatory self-promotion, please. If you have not, or you would like to, read some nice poetry. I don't think I have any spooky poems, but I think they're good. Of course, because I, you know, wrote them. Uh, my poetry book, What If I Wrote the World, poem inspired by music. Back of that thing. Um, still working on my second book. Uh, have not made any progress since the last time I told y'all about it. So, definitely need to push myself in that regard. Um, I also don't have a spooky shirt. But the ears is what we're going to have to work with. Um, yeah. I think once, like, Halloween is over, maybe I'll get some spooky shirts from uh, Spirit Halloween, which is where I got my costumes, which I have to try on to make sure that they fit. So that's exciting. I do have a pumpkin shirt, but it's washing, or what's well, in the dryer now. But I just bought it, so maybe next week I will be wearing my spooky shirt. And I know I always talk about me being at my computer. I don't know if y'all even really care. But yeah, maybe one day I will have like, once I get my own place, I definitely want to have like a better background to my YouTube videos, you know? But here we are for now. And I hope you all enjoy this background. Oh, also, I'm going to be, as long as my costumes fit, I'm going to be Tiana from Princess and the Frog and Lydia from uh beetlejuice the wedding dress so i'm very excited uh there's two places i could wear my costumes because at first i was going to wear it to, one to work but i was like i don't really want to be festive at work i'm gonna be honest with you i don't think they deserve my festive festiveness honestly but anyway we're here to talk about the Baba Duke. so here we are so it was directed by jennifer kent oh the genre i'm pretty sure is psychological horror let me check because I forgot to put that in my notes. And let's see if my internet is going to be. Um, yeah, it's psychological horror. I, wow, my internet is actually fast today. So it is psychological horror. Directed by Jennifer Kent. It was released um, May 22nd, 2014. Uh, the cast is Essie Davis as Amelia Venick, who is the mom of the story. And then Noah Wiseman as Samuel Venick. Um, he's the son. And Tim Purcell, Purcell as the Baba Duke. That's really interesting. Synopsis. So it's based on a short film, which I'm going to be honest. I think I probably saw it before, but I don't remember it. Uh, which follows a single mom who wants to confront her son's fear of a monster in, in their home. So, um, one thing that I want to talk about, this is so random because, um, Smile 2 is coming out and I saw the first one, so I'm contemplating going to go see it and they have scrubbed, I mean, scrubbed the internet of the Smile short film, I guess because they made it into a feature length film. So they're like, just watch the feature, feature length film. So I'm curious if I could even find this short film anymore, if Smile did that. So I'm not sure. But yeah, I definitely uh, plan to watch it at some point. So where can you stream it? You can stream it for free on Pluto TV and Plex. I've never used either one. But if you have a subscription to Netflix, which is where I watched it, you can watch it there. AMC Plus, Philip, YouTube, uh, Amazon Prime, YouTube TV. And you can rent it from Apple TV, Fandango at Home, and Google Play Movies and TV. We'll play movies on TV. Yeah. All right. So let's get into my pros and my cons and my overall opinion. The sun is setting and I'm trying to make it not as bright. So my first pro, I feel like I said this for every single movie, but I feel like I'm going to continue because we're almost at number one. Speaking of that, we're at number two on the list. So just, uh, I'm going to give a little hint. The next for number one is technically three movies, and I've already reviewed one of them. 
So I got to figure out if I'm just going to read like my overall opinion for that one or just rehash everything. So we'll see. But yeah, well, I'm at number one. So I feel like story is going to be important for all of these because a good story is like the foundation of a good movie, honestly, whether it's horror or any other genre. But I think the story is very simple, but still complex and meaningful. I think the combining, uh, I think that combining horror and grief and using a monster uh, to represent it is very clever. Typo in there. Uh, this movie is very unique. It stands out on its own. I feel like it really does because it's using like a monster, which we'll talk about later. To, oh, I already talked about the grief. Um, and the story is like, you know, it could be any family, like a mom and a son or mom and a daughter, anybody. You know, if you lose someone, that's like a universal feeling. Everybody has um, mourned someone in their life, their parent, grandparent, aunts, uncles, you know. Um, especially the way that this uh, story is. So I think I said in my synopsis that he that he passed away recently. He did not. I was wrong about that because I hadn't rewatched the movie yet. Uh, he passed away on the way to the hospital, the husband, uh, when the mom was having her son. So, you know, very traumatic, uh, very upsetting. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's something, you know, intense to deal with, especially like, you know, being instantly being a single mom, like before you even give birth, that's crazy. And then the characters are my next pro. Everyone, including the side characters, did a great job to the point some of them were like annoying. LOL. Like the sister and the niece, like they weren't empathetic and supportive at all. Which I, I mean, part of me is like, okay, yes, it's been seven years. However, how would you feel if your husband died? on the way to you giving birth to your child with him. Like, they had no empathy or support, and they were just, like, mean. It was crazy. Uh, yeah, and they drove me crazy. It's like, like, these are your relatives, and you're making fun of them for not having a dad, and telling them to, like, get over your husband dying. And um, I didn't put this in my notes, but there's, like, a birthday party scene. Uh, I'm not going to spoil too much of it, but the wives are like, <sighs> the wives that are at the party are not empathetic or supportive to Amelia, the mom character, either. And it's just like, and I, I will admit she does need therapy. She she needed therapy already, but it's like they just, and maybe because she hasn't gotten therapy, she's kind of like, she's very emotional. So she definitely needed to deal with her grief. But I just, I kind of feel like nobody was like, nobody was being nice to them. I didn't feel like, you know what I mean? Um, And I feel like people have mentioned this before because I think I've looked at the, a subreddit or something about it that the son might be autistic. They don't mention that in the story or in the movie, but it kind of, it, it would make sense. Um. So, yeah. Yeah, and I would have been cussed my sister out a long time ago. Otherwise, we would have been fell out. And, um, oh, I won't spoil what happens at the party, but something happens to Denise because she was talking shit. And I was so happy. LOL. Because I was like, look at you talking all this mess. And now look at you. I was so happy about that part. Um, and, of course, the two main characters did a great job. Was the son annoying? Some people say he was annoying. Yes, but I also kind of understand, like, I don't really blame him. Like, he really needed professional help. And the mom, you know, unfortunately, like, you can't tell people how long to grieve. So it's, like, hard. So it's, like, I can't blame the child because the mom is going through her issues. And, you know, looking every day at her son who, you know, it was supposed to be the best day. You know, usually when your kid's born, it's supposed to be the best day of your life. And it's, like... You know, it's a really tragic thing, you know, that happened. And then you have to raise your son alone. So it's, I totally understand that, you know. You're trying to come to terms with that. And, uh, oh, yeah, I kind of said that. But, yeah, the main uh, actress, Essie Davis, she did a great job. And um, I know some people talk about, like, child actors not being good. But I thought he was good in the movie, so. 
Okay, the next pro is the music and the atmosphere. The music atmosphere of this movie was very good and it built up the tension very well. Um, this movie also had like old movies playing, which reminded me of like It Follows. And that was fun to like connect the two movies in that way. It's like, oh, two of my movies on my list will have, have old movies playing in them. And um, I love how they use the old movies in the atmosphere as well, because it's kind of like tense, like you're watching the scary thing. And then something scary is happening in the, the movie that you're watching. So it's like, you know, movieception. You know what I mean? Um, and then my last pro is the Bubba Duke and what he represents. I'm going to call the Bubba Duke a he. I know it's technically, I know it's technically a monster, but we're just going to go with that. Of course, the Bubba Duke is scary as hell. LOL. Well, there's no denying that. But him representing grief was really intriguing. And it was a symbolic way to represent unresolved grief. How can creep into your life and take over and consume you? Literally. Um, and I really love what this movie did with its monster. Um, of course, I'm not going to spoil the ending. But it kind of like... It's not... Try not to spoil it. It's not like... It's basically saying, you know, you have to deal with your grief or to consume you. And you have to figure out ways to... Um, you know, grief, I feel like it never, it's, grief is something that just never really goes away, I feel like, because it's just like, you know, every single birthday of your son, you're thinking about that. Uh, every time there's maybe a parent-teacher conference, it's only you, you know, so it's like, there's no getting over grief, but it does, like, basically say you have to face it, kind of at the ending. And I don't have any cons for this movie, actually. Um, I will say I watched this movie. Oh, here's my overall opinion. And then I'm also gonna insert. Uh, I, I guess this, is this kind of a spoiler to insert pictures of the Bubba Duke? I'm gonna insert some. Uh, cause I feel like oh, also his character design was really good, and it was like also connected with this is a little bit of spoiler. It's also connected with the father, obviously, cause it's like you, he's the manifestation of grief, right? Um. And I feel like the connection with like some of the clothes and the Babadook and the dad, and they did a really great job with that. So with the symbolism and the way the Babadook looked and, you know, like the physical manifestation of grief. All right, so now let's get into my overall opinion. Uh, like I said, I watched this movie during the daytime, LOL. I will say it was nice rewatching it because some things I had forgotten about and seeing the deeper meaning again was refreshing. I won't spoil the ending, of course, but it was like a full circle moment and it definitely felt satisfying. Um, because there's a, like there's some there's a place in the house that is like significant, and then in the ending, they're in that place, uh, the mom at least, and it's really like a coming to terms with your grief. And facing a head-on kind of moment. I think the story, music, and atmosphere, characters, and the Bubba Duke himself made this movie so unique beyond the scares. And I will say, this movie did not have any jump scares. I love that, which I love. It builds up the tension very well, you know, with subtlety and a shadow here and a noise, and you know, it like it builds it up to the climax. Um, I'm trying to think: is this movie a slow burn? I want to say kind of. It's only an hour and 30. I'm trying to remember because I know like with um, Insidious and The Conjuring was like the last 45 minutes. I want to say, I want to say stuff happened before the last 45 minutes, but I wasn't really paying attention to like when everything came up. So I can't really say 100% if it was a slow burn. Uh, but I, th I think the payoff is worth it. Uh, of course, this movie is a uh, 10 out of 10 highly recommend. And I would definitely see what else this director and cast have been in and what the director has. I feel like I've seen her direct something else, but I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. So those are my thoughts on the Bubba Duke. And I decided to write a haiku because uh, I hadn't written one in a while. And I was trying to rhyme. It didn't come out the way I wanted 100%. But you know what? It is what it is. So it's called Duke Duke Bubba Duke. Because I was part of the like little children's book 
that they saw the Bubba Duke in in the movie. So here it goes. Look, look, it's the one and only Bubba Duke coming to steal your joy like a crook. So yeah, that's my haiku for the Bubba Duke. Um, I also want to talk about something really funny. Um, I thought this was like a real thing, but I, it might not have been. But apparently somebody maybe photoshopped that the Bubba Duke was in like the LGBTQ plus category on Netflix. So he became a gay icon. And I just really feel like that is so funny and interesting, you know. <laughs> so I just wanted to mention that part. Have you seen the Bubba Duke? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Did you know that it was supposed to be about grief? Did you not? Did you just like it for what it was? Let me know in the comments. And we're almost at number one. And I'll see you all next week.